This is Miss Havisham. Lovely autumn day in Sheffield. This is Attercliffe Cemetery. Or Attercliffe Road. There's lots of old history here. This chapel was built in 1629, funded by the Bright family. Very well known steel family in the old days in Sheffield. Now what's happening here, it looks like there's some work being done, some kind of demolition work. There's lots of old tombs and this is really interesting. what they call the bed tomb because this is like a bed. See lots of trees are being cut down. The trees in these cemeteries were chosen specially so there's lots of weeping willows in these places. I might be told to stop filming if, uh, if any workmen come along and see how I'll get on. Put down. A lot of these gravestones have been laid flat. They're so worn away now anyway. They really are worn away. So It's massive. That is a massive tool. Again, quite well worn away. There's an old tool there. really are close together some of these. This is a real like a double one. This is a double one. Let's see if I can get writing on the stone. It's really weird. I think a lot of the old gravestones have already been removed because at one time all this would have been totally covered in gravestones and now it's grassed over. Probably they became unsafe. Now this, I'm going to go to Benjamin Huntsman's grave. He found a way to manufactured steel using the round crucible parts. Died in 1776. Of course that was a very important year for certain things. 1776 is the year that stands out. All these are laid down, so these wouldn't have been laid flat like this originally. And they were very high stones, so they would have really stood up really high. 
probably because a lot of people would have been buried in the graves. It would have been about 10 deep. It would have been about 10 deep when they were originally uh, using this graveyard. So that's why they needed a tall memorial stone so they could get all the inscriptions on for all the people that were going to be buried in it. And that's really tall. Maybe about six foot tall. No one's said anything yet that I, I can't carry on. Because there's lots of demolition work going on. That's at the chapel. And this is another big one. Whole family buried here. In the 1700s. This one goes back to the 1700s. To the memory of, that's another important tomb. Someone from a wealthy family. I don't know what this work is they're doing, but they're doing some demolition work. Looks like they're moving some gravestones and piling them up. So these areas can be uneven. So I have to be careful. This has been cleared recently. Gravestones have been cleared from here recently because the soil's been dug over. Oh, they've all been laid flat. Just one left standing there. It's a nice tree. This is a big memorial. It's really interesting. A dog. Mary Makin, relict of William Makin, who died April 30th, 1878, in her 71st year. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. It's really, really tall. That must have cost a fortune. So that family was a wealthy family. These actually do look like solid stone. This one does. It does look as if it is. Well, it won't be solid stone inside, but this outside part does look like real solid stone. Seventeen ninety nine. That's a big obelisk over there. I'm going to go down there in a second. Cover all this area first. So all these blocks, all these stone blocks. have been smashed up. All smashed up. Let's see if I can get it this way. I'm 
probably walking over graves now. Those are walking over graves, so <laughs> let's be careful. This was the only Anglican church in Sheffield area until 1826, apparently. It's another big one. Looks like a double one. So it was probably all for one family. It's absolutely massive. They do really look like solid stone blocks that are on the top of there. Can't get any closer to that one. This really is part of history. So when these old graveyards are destroyed, it is taking away the history. And also the fact that we are not living longer. People have always lived into their 80s and 90s. Or as now, people die at any age. 60s, 70s, but even then, in, in those days, it was the same. Now I'm going to go over to this obelisk. I'm going to the obelisk now. This is the tree that's been cut down. You can see the weeping willows, lots of those. There used to be lots of holly as well in graveyards. Holidays, holy days. It's, that's where the word comes from. Holiday comes from holly which was pagan. Augusta Matilda, daughter of Robert and Matilda Oran, of West Bar, Sheffield, departed this life, 1825, aged 11 years. Also of Emily Sophia, sister to the above, who departed this life September, 1825, aged eight years. So yeah, children did die. It's very sad, but of course, that happens now as well. Really big obelisk. Stepping backwards. Lots of ivy as well on the wall. Looks like that will be good for bonfire night. That pile of wood. Really lovely autumn day. These beautiful trees. This is actually Attercliffe, is where these it's the east end of Sheffield where all the steelworks were. There's not much left of that now. But this is was the main area for all the manufacture of steel and all the munitions factories in the first and second world war, they were all down here. It was a thriving 
place with lots of character. And then of course all the houses were demolished in the 60s, 1960s. So all the people went and then the community had gone and then there was not much left, nothing left, all the shops closed, pubs closed, the people have gone, everything else goes. It is a beautiful place actually. Probably not many people even know it's here. Someone there was 69 years, 65 years, but then people die at that age now. Not changed that much. Sacred to the memory. As long as there's anyone left to remember. Trying to read what it says, it's a bit difficult. This person made a moderate, he acquired a moderate fortune. He relinquished his occupation and spent the remainder, remainder of his days in promoting the welfare of his fellow mortals. The extent of his benevolence and so great his anxiety to do good that he actually devoted four fifths of his income to the support of public charities. The relic relief of relief of can't read that word and tradesmen and other laudable objects. He was born September 29, 1743 and died August 17, 1826. So that was someone who really cared about other people. He was a philanthropist. Many of these steel barons were philanthropists back in those days. Looks like that's going to be the bonfire. Goes right to the end. There's no graves there. The, the stones will all have been removed. It will have been full of gravestones at one time.
It's all history. Nothing morbid about it. See the chapel there. It's still in use actually. You can still go to services on Sundays and it looks like they're building an extension on the back. At least it has been saved. The many old chapels have been long gone. But this is still in use. This person came from Birmingham, departed this life 1862. In the midst of life, we are in death. That's the thought. Yeah.